Hey guys, and welcome back. We're going to be talking about an odd one today, and that's Shadowland on the PC Engine, an arcade port which was brought to us by Namco back in 1987. The Famicom also got its own version of the game as well, and a re-release of the PC Engine version was put up for sale on Nintendo's Virtual Console in 2009. You play as Tarosuke, a boy on an arduous journey through the five layers of hell in an attempt to prove his own worth and find out what kind of afterlife awaits him. Shadowland is basically a run-and-jump platformer slash action game at its core, but it does have some pretty unique little tricks up its sleeve that definitely help separate it from the pack. Our hero combats the many monsters of the underworld by shooting what are called key bullets, which can be powered up by holding down on the D-pad. This technique can be life-saving at times, and it will knock out pretty much anything in your way, but it does take some practice to get it just right. See, if you're even one second too late in charging the attack, he will get tired and become stunned for a moment, which in turn leaves him open to enemy attacks. Money also plays an important role in Shadow Land. Cash can be collected while playing through the stages and by defeating enemies, and can be used in the game's several shops, gambling halls, and even to open up new paths in certain stages. My personal favorite one is the striptease on the third level that you can access by paying off a group of turtles. There are a total of five levels in the game and different routes that can be taken within them. Five levels may not seem like many, and it's not, but I can assure you that this game is no joke. Its difficulty can really be attributed to the fact that you only have one life in the entire game, and no matter how far you get, you always have to restart at the opening level. It can be incredibly frustrating at times, and I lost count at how many times I died while filming the footage for this review. A lot of the reason behind that is that the controls are very stiff when it comes to the platforming, and the game's enemies seem randomized at times and will fly in from off screen at the worst possible moments. It's also incredibly easy to get stuck in a loop of taking damage from multiple enemies that will almost certainly result in a game over. Luckily, the game's shopping mechanic does ease a bit of the tension, allowing you to buy some health up items, power up your shots, increase your movement speed, etc. On top of shopping, there's also a really cool secret spot on level 2 where you'll run into the naked goddess of the lake. If you can make it over here, she will bless you with an extra life, which is very cool. Different animals can also become allies on your journey by handing items over to them and will help you kill the majority of an entire level's enemies when hired. Another interesting feature in Shadowland is the way that you fight the bosses. Tarosuke will start praying until a guardian spirit pops out for you to control and take down the boss with, almost like a small shoot 'em up segment. The graphics in Shadowland are pretty basic. It's simple, but it's incredibly stylized. There's not too much variation in the five stages, but the character and enemy design is top-notch. The thing about Shadowland is that there's always something interesting to look at. The sound and music is pretty much the same deal. While I really do enjoy the music and the sound effects in the game, there's really not much of it to listen to. The game basically has the same theme from beginning to end, only changing for certain special events or scenes. It's no big deal though, since the music itself is really catchy and hard to forget. Keep in mind that as weird as this game may seem to watch, it's based on stories that the majority of Japanese children are taught from a very young age. It's kind of hard to make a lot of sense out of it as an adult that was never exposed to it, but I honestly think that its weirdness and unfamiliarity is part of what makes it so charming. If you've got a thick skin and are willing to deal with the frustration factor of the game, Shadowland is totally one that's worth playing. It's entirely unique, surreal, and it's entertaining. The good news is that it's also a pretty cheap game. 
I ended up getting my copy for about $5 for the PC Engine, and it can easily be found on the Wii's Virtual Console for just a couple of bucks. As always, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching and subscribing, and until next time, stay classic.